a new article that I uh, just uh, read. I thought it was pretty interesting because the big knock on Cardano was, look, you guys are super slow. It's taking a long time to get things done. Nobody's building on it. What the heck's going on? Wait, for a second, you have to understand. Gogan era just came about as far as smart contracts. The Mary Hard Fork just came about. So you can't compare a Cardano to Ethereum so much because Ethereum is way far ahead. Let's just be honest. You cannot build too much on Cardano. And I think that might change. So this was a nice little piece about Occam's Razor. So massive expansion of the Cardano ecosystem could see a massive expansion of its on-chain liquidity with the launch of Occam Razor, a decentralized funding platform and liquidity solutions specifically built to suit the needs of the network. The network, talking about Cardano, has been notorious for its slow development and bootstrapping process. I've been a critical, I've been critical on it as well. Uh, that's just how it is. I like to uh, make things move a little bit faster. But when you're trying to do, you know, things globally, maybe it's uh, not a bad idea to kind of slow down, learn from other mistakes, fix those mistakes, and then move on. With the network now fully decentralized, uh, that is 100% of the stake pool operators are now minting blocks. Um, it's uh, doing pretty well as far as Cardano and decentralization. The time has come for projects to launch on Cardano and utilize, utilize the functionalities that took years to develop. Again, this is the year for Cardano to really start to see things. If nobody builds on Cardano this year, I'm going to pull a Mike Novogratz and hang up my spurs because there's no reason why they shouldn't. And uh, time will tell. Occam Finance, this is from Occam's Razor, has set its sights on making Cardano the go-to network for fundraising. The first division's components will be Occam's Razor, DeFi funding platform, blah, blah, blah. According to the company's blog post, Occam's Razor is fully production ready and will host the first project raising funds soon. To support the Occam ecosystem, the company will launch the OCC token utilizing Cardano's native assets functionality. So very interesting stuff as far as what is going on. So I don't know a lot about Occam's Razor. I don't know exactly, you know, it's great to have liquidity and things like that. I need somebody smarter than me, which is not hard, by the way, to explain what the heck is going on. So I'm going to bring in uh, Mark Berger. Uh, he is the president of Occam's Razor. And I'm just going to ask him the questions. What's going on? How does this work all into Cardano? And are people going to actually build on this thing so we can actually hit the next level? So let's jump right in to this interview. So like we just talked about with that, with that article, interesting stuff going on with Cardano. A lot of the things I actually need help on to really clarify what was uh, being said there. So uh, I reached out to a couple of friends and they introduced me to uh, Mark Berger. He is the uh, president of Occam's Association, a nonprofit, which is going to work to help to raise Cardano and all the things we just talked about in that article. So Mark, thanks for coming on. Talk to us and simplify it like we're five. Tell us what is going on and then, uh, you know, just clarify some things. So. First off, what is uh, Occam's Razor? Well, thank you for having me. So mm -hmm. Occam's Razor is a launchpad for Cardano. It will enable Cardano developers to get the desired funds to start building on Cardano. Sounds good. I can see that. So then we need that foundation. We need that liquidity, right? That's what is going to build on it. I believe that this is kind of like the year for everything to happen. Smart contracts are coming down the pipe. Golden Era is here. We had the Mary Hard Fork. So is that the big thing that Occam's, that your foundation or that your association is going to be doing? Or is there more pieces of the puzzle? Because if it's, if it's just liquidity, I mean, that's great. We, we all need liquidity to bring over these developers. Anything else going on? Yeah, so we are building this... First of all, in, in Ethereum, we're having a beta test right now and we'll be releasing in April. Mm -hmm. We're building this on Ethereum to um, capture liquidity from a other chain to enable ah. Cardano developers. And then in August, we'll be ready um, to port it over um, to Cardano and then we'll live on both blockchains. Okay, so we got four months here. We're gonna build it on Ethereum. You're going to build everything on Ethereum and then bring it all over for native assets so that people, not everybody, but the people that who are building over there can make it very easy to come on over to Cardano and of course the liquidity that follows. Okay, so that is that part. Is that correct? 
That is correct. On top of that, we have partnerships with uh, centralized uh, exchanges that are going to enable a centralized bridge, a Ethereum to Cardano or vice versa bridge. So the first use case is going to be that um, our OCC token can be deposited to those uh, exchanges either as an ERC-20 or as a uh, Cardano uh, asset. And on that exchange, you can um, switch the chain um, mm -hmm. and then withdraw it into um, that chain where you need it. This is, of course, course only the, the first use case. Over time, you'll be able to withdraw a Bitcoin and uh, hunt for some interesting yield um, on the uh, Oaken platform as well. Okay. Well, I like that. Everybody likes yield. We'll take it. So now that we have all these things going on, um, I did a little bit more research. I took a look at it in, in the background. Is there any plans for a DEX, decentralized exchange, something like that? Because if you're gonna build on, on Ethereum, Ethereum's great and it's gonna do well, but there is a one big problem. I think we all know that problem. It is the gas fees. So, and of course, time constraints. So anything like that's gonna happen down the pipe? Yes, exactly. So. After the release of uh, Oakum Razor, um, we'll have a release of Oakum X, which um, is a, okay. let's say, Uniswap version for DEX that has many, many uh, improvements. Those improvements, they mainly come from uh, my or my team's past, where we have been working on centralized uh, digital asset exchanges and where we exactly know how uh, such an exchange works and, and, and what the mechanics are in there. And we sort of analyzed what is out there in DEXs today and um, are going to fix many of these uh, problems. The same thing here. First, it's going to be live on Ethereum. Um, right now, we're um, testing uh, on, on uh, testnet. And okay. we're confident that we can release the first version in, let's say, two, three months from now. Um, and then the same thing as well. We're going to port this over using Plutus in the Please. summer this year to make it happen on Cardano and benefit from, from all the things uh, that have been happening on Cardano um, that, that we can utilize there. Gotcha. Well, that sounds pretty good. I'll take that DEX. I'll take that DEX because I don't want to pay outrageous fees. So we'll see how that works out. And you know, I, I really should have started with because uh, Danish introduced us, uh, Danish Chowdhury over there at uh, Bitcoin.com. That's a little fancy exchange that, that, uh, that's going on. And he said, you know, hey, this is, this is Mark. You got to talk to this guy and he knows what's going on. But tell us real quick, I'm a big believer in investing in people. A lot of the people that are on my, on my channel, my subscribers kind of are in the same type of vein and theory as me. So Mark, tell us like, first of all, how'd you get into this? Is this like something that is new or have you been doing this for quite some time? Because I took a look at some, some history. Looks like there's been a lot of history. So just tell us, just ease our, ease our fears and tell us where, where you came from. Yeah, so I have around 20 years of experience sure. um, running um, startups in, in the tech uh, environment. And I had a, a short uh, three-year engagement with the bank where I had to build a, yeah, custody from scratch, a trading desk for digital assets from scratch. All those things back then didn't really exist, so I had to build them. <laughs> this um, is true. But yeah. uh, a, a bank remains a bank, so I had to get some freedom uh, and, and get out of there and uh, build stuff. Mm -hmm. I believe by building stuff, you, you have more impact anyway. This is true. So I'm going to guess this was not an <laughs> this was not an American bank because this was this was <laughs> because and and first of all what what year was this? I don't think this was last year. Yeah. So so the the engagement with the bank started in late uh, 2015. Okay. Um, so it was a yeah. bit before uh, the the 2017 craze, yeah. uh, which <laughs> went really well for the bank. Um, and then after the 2017 craze, um, I, I left to to go build again. It was not an American bank; it was a Swiss bank called uh, Von Tobel. Um, it's the the Shocker. yeah the biggest bank for um, structured products in in Europe. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, so I'm Swiss myself, so it's only natural um, that I had to end up um, in, in a Swiss environment somewhere. Totally makes sense. And then, but this was 2015, but even before then, you were in blockchain and cryptocurrency and digital assets, right? 
Yes, yes, yes. I had my uh, my phase where I was interested uh, in in Bitcoin and where I um, started making yeah. sense uh, of what this is and, and how this works and if it will eventually impact uh, the, the the world uh, mm -hmm. with what it is and what it does. Gotcha. So okay, so we go from there all the way up to to the present. Now we're talking about Occam's Razor. We're talking about uh, the whole uh, liquidity process. We're talking about a Dex. And then what about like for, for self-governance and DAOs and things like that? Yeah, that's our, our third product. So yeah. the OCC token um, basically um, has this function um, that it can be used in, in the, the Oakum, Oakum DAO. Yeah. So what we're trying to achieve is that we have a, a wide distribution um, of the OCC token so that over time we can uh, decentralize the, the Oakum protocol and get it in the hands of the users so that they can uh, yeah, write proposals, that they can get them voted, uh, et cetera. Gotcha. Okay. So we got three. Okay. So I'm talking about these things and you're, and you're telling me about, okay, we got this product, this product, this product. Any other, any other uh, projects that you have in that little, little arsenal that you've been talking about? Or is there anything else I missed? Yeah, I think th those three products are the main ones. So okay. Oakum Razor, Lan Launchpad, Oakum X, um, Advanced uh, Dex, and then the Oakum DAO represented by, by the OCC token. Um, there, there is a few like side things, for instance, a uh, centralized uh, bridge where you can uh, swap tokens from uh, Ethereum to Cardano um, and, and the other way around, um, which should give uh, exchanges, centralized exchanges freedom uh, in, in the future so that uh, when people want to withdraw tokens, um, and don't want to spend too much gas and want to put it on a blockchain where there's interesting yield um, to, to capture, then they can do that using, using that bridge. Gotcha. And I think that all comes down to when you were working, I think you were working with exchanges in the past, and this is where it all comes from. That is true. That is true. So my old company, um, Scalable Solutions, yeah. is running many um, exchanges throughout the world. So it has a global reach. It's about 22 exchanges and uh, um, about the same amount uh, of, of wallets. And overall, um, the technology is, is processing roughly 10% of, of the global spot volume uh, on a daily basis. Gotcha. That's one of the things I remember Danish actually telling me uh, in between drinks. So yeah, that makes sense. All right. So then, so first of all, Mark, we all appreciate you coming on here to help us make sense of what's going on. It sounds like a pretty good project. Let's, there's last bonus question I'll just ask you is this. Cardano gets a lot of flack because let's be honest, it is not the fastest in development. They take it very slow, very nice. And in the beginning, because I'm an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur. We like to, you know, get things done and throw things at the wall. But sometimes it's not a good idea to do that. Uh, a prime example would be like Boeing or airlines. I don't want them to figure out all the mechanical problems when they're up in the air. When I'm in that jet, make sure you fix it before I get up there. So when we're talking about these things, where do you see Cardano going in? Let's just take it simple. Six months, a year, and then try to go till out, out to three years. Where do you see everything happening with Cardano? Well, we're closer than ever um, for things to, to happen for real with Cardano. So basically, all we have to do is wait um, until um, the, the smart contracts are, are fully functioning, mm -hmm. which uh, should be happening uh, later this, this summer. Yeah. Um, and once that happens, it will be a fantastic ecosystem um, that can prosper uh, in too many, many ways. So you, you mentioned that, uh, yeah, a plane should be in order before you board and, and take off. Yes. And this has been happening to Cardano uh, behind the scenes over many years. So there has been a lot of thought uh, put into it. It's already today um, the most decentralized uh, proof of stake uh, blockchain, um, which has, at least for me, decentralization um, has a, a core value. Um, it's going to be super important uh, going forward. Then speed is 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 another thing. Security um, is is 
the most important uh, factor. And then there is a lot of things they have been putting thought into um, to be ready for also institutional adoption, um, which is going to be the, the game changer um, over the next year when the real money um, is going to be on the blockchain. Yeah, we'll see how this all unfolds. I think this is, this, like I've always said, uh, and everybody out there watching, I think 2021 is the year for the thing to really take just launch or launch pad off. So we'll see how it all goes. I personally own a lot of different cryptocurrencies. I do not own any any tokens with Aquas Razor or anything like that. But uh, Cardano, I'm a state, one of the state pool operators. So I have a financial interest. Also, I have a financial interest in Ethereum. I don't know which one's going to be great and which one's going to be awesome. I have no idea, but it's looking pretty good for this year. Mark, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Any last words before we take off? Well, thanks a lot uh, for having me. Um, and uh, go and check it our Twitter or Telegram. Um, there will be frequent news coming out that should get many people excited. Sounds good. I'll put it in the description.